Tonight, I check into a New Mexico hotel where the guests are driven away by the owner, who thinks you share. I'm like an audio mirage. If I do a share tune, you're going to think you're hearing share. You walk a turn by time. You walk a find a way. I've got to find a way to save a sinking hotel with dreadful entertainment. I would pay you 100 bucks not to sink. Awful food. It's like the cat shell over my plate. And a general manager who can't be trusted. Does the general manager bad mouth the owner behind her back? Yes. What an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. The 14-bedroom Maison de Mesilla is a small boutique hotel located in the border town of Las Cruces, New Mexico. It should be a wonderful southwestern oasis, but the few guests that visit the hotel are in for an unpleasant surprise. Owner, Kali Shavinsky, purchased the former bed and breakfast in 2006 and completely remodeled it, putting her own distinctive taste and style into every aspect, from the food to the furnishings. To me, it's very European. It's very Tuscan in nature. Maybe that's the Venetian plaster, but I didn't really pick a style as much as I just picked out things that I liked. And one thing Kelly likes a lot is beige. The bedrooms are beige with beige and a little beige. The walls are freaky. It looks okay, like it's that's... trying to be marble, but it's plastic. I do not believe the customer is always right. Definitely not a place that I would feel comfortable staying. Sometimes they're wrong. I well. Sure that well. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy just... wanted to make sure it was a well. You know, the more you cook it, the less flavor it will have. How's that chicken parm tender salad going? Callie made the menu. We only serve Tuscan food. I don't even know if Callie's ever been to Italy. 86 bruschetta. Told you guys forever that was an awful recipe. But it may not be the bad food or the decor that's keeping guests away. My mother was a bartender, and she would have me sing to people, and they paid attention to me, and they liked me. I live for applause. Kelly tried to make it as a professional singer, but when her career stalled, she found her own personal concert venue. I bought the hotel to sing. The audience members really liked me a lot. I'm like an, an audio mirage. You, if, if I do a share tune, you're going to think you're hearing share. If you're not looking at me, you think I am share. You want to turn my time. You want to find a way. I'll take back those words that it hurt you. And you stay. I don't know why until the flames are deep. We get a lot of telephone calls. It's Callie singing tonight. Well, then that kind of means they like me. Too proud to tell you I was wrong. I think I surprise them quite a bit because they just don't expect it. Give me just a second here. After that song, I need a little drink. Two months ago, Kelly hired local restaurateur Zan Steinberg as her new general manager. Ladies, how are we? We're who's, check, who's checking in? Zan's wife, Mitzi, has been working with Kelly since the hotel opened. In the beginning, my husband Zan and Kelly's relationship was very good. Has it deteriorated? Oh, punch. Where are the keys? How can I get anything done if that bastard won't put shit back? Zan is the biggest problem here right now, and that's unfortunate because I brought him on to help me with what I thought the biggest problem was, was we don't have enough customers. Some kind of general manager he is. Callie should be fired for being a poor operator and digging this thing into a hole. With ownership and management not on the same page, the guests are the ones that suffer. How is everything here? We're basically ready to get our food to go because we waited so long. Okay. Let me take care of this. Callie believes that the customers have a place in her hotel, but Callie's at the tippy top of that pyramid. I do not enjoy going up to tables and having something wrong at every fucking table I go to. I don't like it at all. Hotel bookings have fallen to an all-time low, and for much of the year, not one of the 14 bedrooms has a guest in. If things don't change fast, the hotel will be forced to close. Someone needs to be able to tell me what it is I'm doing wrong. It's everything that I have is tied up into the hotel. I need Gordon's help badly. My first time in New Mexico, I'm in Las Cruces in the Southwest Desert. And look at it. I mean, absolutely stunning. On the way to the Maison de Messia, 
Now, this is a small boutique hotel, possibly the perfect getaway. You have arrived at your destination. You're kidding me. I mean, this is a joke. You've arrived. And look, yeah, I've got a fucking pile of sand. Turn around when possible. This is crazy. It doesn't make sense. You have arrived at your destination. Is that it there? Turn around Turn when around. possible. You'd think they have a decent sign on there, wouldn't you? It's like a prison. Finally. Hello. Hello. Welcome to my sauna, Messia. Good to see you. So whose favorite color is beige? Well, Callie was the decorator. Callie is the? Callie is the owner. The owner, right. This is our cleaning agreement. If you could read and sign it, please. Cleaning agreement? Yes, just so uh, you don't. I'm not coming for a job or a detox or. Just so you don't or... damage our property. This is a. Damage your property? Yes. The owner is very concerned Scotland. about the Venetian plaster. The owner is very concerned about the? Venetian plaster. And she wants me to sign a waiver. Yes, sir. To say that I won't damage it. Yes, sir. Does everyone have to sign these? Everyone, yes. Why would I sign a waiver? I'm not sure why you'd want to sign a waiver. No, sir. I'm not going to sign that. By the way, welcome. Good to see you. What a first impression. I don't believe that there needs to be a waiver. I just do what I'm told. You put all these things on there. It doesn't look like New Mexico to me. It sure doesn't. Maybe Italian? Uh, well, I have two Russians in Italy, and my Russians haven't got pictures of New Mexico. Bloody hell. Let's go up to the room. Do I have to sign a waiver to walk on the carpet? No, sir. Look, that was not me. Looks like someone's pooped on my wall. No, oh, you got a little fireplace. A fireplace. That's exactly what you need in the middle of a fucking desert. Do you have any alternate rooms? I'd love to move if it was less beige. All the rooms are going to be the same. Oh, shit. Well, thank you. I'm going to pack. You're going to leave me alone on my own in my room. Do I need to sign a waiver? No, sir. No. Nice to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you too, Gordon. Thank you. This room is so bland, it looks more like an airport hotel than a fun weekend getaway in the heart of New Mexico. I can't wait to meet the woman behind this. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the sun. Gordon. And Callie. Callie, good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, I thought that you'd be wearing beige with a lady that's in love with beige everywhere. I do like beige. My favorite color is beige, but I think beige goes with a lot of things. I didn't sign the waiver. Sending that message out to every customer coming in here is not a good sign to begin with. Well, it's $7.50 a square foot to replace the Venetian plaster, so it right. can be a lot if someone does some damage. Why don't you uh, show me around? I would love to show yeah. you around. This is the main dining room. How many seats have you got here? 89. Um, what do you have, a stairs? It's a stage where I perform. Oh, wow, amazing. Uh, and percussionist, guitarist? No, I, actually, right now I sing to tracks. So you have, like, a backing track? And I you do. sing over yes. there? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. And this is the bar. This is the bar. Over there, we have another yeah. stage. I usually sing in here on Fridays and Saturdays. Okay. And who else performs here? No one else. No. Wow, wow, wow. And then through here? Seriously? What's all that shit in the pool? Well, that's from the pool cleaner who was supposed to be here this morning. It's a little bit late. Is it busy, the pool? No, it's not. Very seldom do people use really? the pool. Mind you, I suppose it's like going for a swim in a prison. Jesus Christ. What's on the back there? That was for entertainment. Oh my God, three stages. I sing everywhere in the hotel. I love to sing, period. Three stages? I hope there's no stage in the kitchen. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good to see you, Angel. Sarah, nice, nice to, to see you. you. Likewise, where are you from? I'm from New Mexico. Oh, I'm nice. Yeah, local girl. Mm -hmm, I am. Excellent. Is the cuisine uh, New Mexican? No. There's, some there's nothing here that's New Mexican at all, no. This is all very uh, confusing. I'm looking forward to tasting the food later. Anyway, whatever Wonderful. it is. Uh, let's catch up with the bar, shall we? Nice okay. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I like to cook Southwestern cuisine. Like, I don't know why we have Tuscan food. As the owner, in your mind, what's wrong with the place? Well, we don't have enough customers. And you've had it now since? 2006. How much did it cost? $1.2 million. Wow. And that's what I purchased it for. And how much did you spend converting it? Another 1.2. Mm. Two and a half million. Bloody hell. I shut down for 14 months to remodel it. 14 months shutdown. That's yeah, incredible. it wasn't supposed to be 14 months. It was supposed to be four. It turned it into 14 months and a million two to do it. And the contractor was indicted. Bloody hell. I've gone through a lot of stuff with this hotel. It's like, I'm starting to think maybe the problem is I'm just too trusting. How long can you continue putting money in? <sighs> I've got maybe 60, 70, $70,000 left. So for the next six months, max. Yeah, unless, unless, we, unless it kicks up. Um, listen, I'm, uh, I'm here to help. And I'm sorry it's been this difficult. Thank you. I'm glad to see you. I'm, I'm really glad you're here.
I've just arrived at Maison de Messia, and I'm confused by this hotel. Who put all these things on there? It doesn't look like New Mexico to me. It sure doesn't. I met Cali, the owner, and she told me she's desperate for this place to succeed. I'm really glad you're here. So, I'm keen to meet the general manager and see why he's letting this place fail on his watch. Now you're the general manager. I'm the general manager. Um, how long have you been working in hotels? Hotels would be nine weeks. Said, I'd never been in a hotel, but I'd always been in restaurants, full-service restaurants. How does a restaurant manager become qualified to be a general manager of a hotel when you've never worked in a hotel before? It's not that complicated. Take care of the guests, check It's not that in. complicated. I don't believe it is. I can do the work. It's not that hard. There's only like six, seven things I need to learn. What are the major problems? The major problem is Callie is the owner. She's the major problem. Major problem. She is too controlling, and my hands are being tied. If you're not being allowed to do the job you came in to do, why are you here? I'm here because I'm emotionally invested in the place. How the fuck you be emotionally my... invested when you've only been here nine weeks? weeks? Well, my wife's been here all these years. Anytime somebody calls in sick, the first person they call is Mitzi. We've always thought it's a gold mine. We just can't figure out why we can't get people in the seats. The only way for Misson to be successful is for Callie to back out. What are these things here? Uh, the vinyl, we're, uh... Disgusting. In fact, can we take this off? Do you mind? Instantly, that looks better, right? You do not need to be a general manager to make that decision, do you? No. Is there a server, or...? Uh, we're gonna bring a server over here. Please. Right and his or her name? Uh, Mitzi. Mitzi. Oh, it's your wife? Yes. How are you? Good, how are you? Let's order first, shall we? Okay. And then we'll have a chat. All right. Well, what would you like? We are in New Mexico, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, we are in Las Vegas. And I Taste of Tuscany. Yes. Why wouldn't you just go for a modern, stunning, delicious Mexican cuisine? I guess it's because she thinks there's enough of them. It's crazy. Uh, the prosciutto looks good. Okay. The chicken ricotta, that sounds interesting. Okay. The lamb lollipops. Wow, well, it's not cheap, is it? $23 mm -hmm. for the lamb lollipops. Thank you, my darling. Uh -huh. Bloody hell. I got the prosciutto. I know good food. Thank you so much. No problem. Our food is really good. <laughs> to be forewarned. It's like the cat shell over my plate. Prosciutto normally goes with uh, tomatoes. Yes, Looks and like this the... is olives and anchovies. Popular dish? Um, no. It's like vomit, that I guess. Right? Whew, dear, oh dear. Word's got out that I'm in town, and the restaurant is starting to fill up with customers. Can I this like this? I feel sorry for all of them. Wow, here we go, my $23 lollipops. Been the longest member of staff here. What do you think is wrong with this place? Um, I think Callie's reputation. Is it that bad? She's rude. She's rude? Mm-hmm. She's brass. She's short. She's not flexible. I think you get the picture. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Uh -huh. Blimey. Not what I'd call a loyal workforce. Oh, flat. $23. Dreadful. Tough as fuck. Do you like lamb? I love lamb. It's tough as anything. It's a little tough and perhaps a little rare. A little tough. What is going on? No, you haven't got much hotel experience, but isn't this your forte, restaurants? Yes. Bloody hell. I'm finished with that. Thank you. I mean, dreadful. Absolutely. You can tell it. Is that lamb frozen? The lamb comes frozen, and we thaw, of course. Can you find out where it's from? Yes. Psst. Lamb lollipops. No go. So far, nothing I've tasted has even a remote connection to the area. Nothing local, nothing authentic, nothing New Mexico. New Zealand. New Zealand lamb. Mm -hmm. Wow. That part's right. That part's right. Okay. Our chicken is um, piccata is non-traditional. Thank you for visiting us here at Masande Masia. My name is Callie. I'm going to do just a little music for you this afternoon. A little rock number from Cher. Love her. You walk a turn by time. You walk a fire away. I'll take my And it's not in the kitchen. Uh, yes, a little bit much. Uh, I'm not too sure what's more scary, the food or the singing. What would you say? I don't know, they complement each other. How are we, ladies? Attacked by a fake bunch of graves. <laughs>
thanks for joining us here. Is that normal? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not just because I'm here. No. She is not Cher. I am sorry. I, I love this thing. That's probably why I bought this place. I've got to get away from this horrendous singing. We haven't met yet, have we? Say again, sir? We haven't met yet, have we? No, sir, I'm David. David, what'd you do? Yes, sir, I'm a pantry. Pantry? Yes, sir. Tell us. Are you trained, David? Well, it's trained a little bit, sir. I've been around, sir. And where's your love of food coming from? Where, where do you? Where my do you... father. Your father. Dad's a chef? No, sir, my dad was a nurse, but he loved to eat. Wow. Walking in another calamari with the rim you like. I have the second calamari selling right now, ma'am. Heard. Could just two seconds? Yes, sir. It's, it's already breaded is. Oh, yes, fried. sir. I'm going to fry it right now, sir. That's already cooked? Yes, sir. So when was it cooked? Oh, actually, we get it in a box, sir. We get it from a fish company, sir. Completely frozen. Just touch that? Oh, yes, sir. It feels like rubber. I, I don't eat the fish here, sir. How come you know this and you're still doing it? My opinion doesn't matter in this restaurant. You know it's bad. Yes. And yet you just, against your will, do it. <laughs> Life. <laughs> wow. I hope tonight's guests can remain as positive as David has. If you can sign this here for me, it's just a cleaning agreement. A what? A cleaning agreement? Just in case you do throw red wine on our walls. Does that happen? It has happened, actually. Unfortunately, the guests checking in are getting the same terrible welcome that I did. If I could please have you read. Good evening, ladies. Welcome. Nice to see you both. Thank you. I'd like to apologize about the waiver. All right, well, you, you got to do, ooh. Oh, oh. No throwing red wine on the walls. Do you sign but, a cleaning agreement? Yeah. So what does that mean? Like, do the checkoff list when you come in, and then do the checkoff list when you exit in the exactly. morning? Is there any other breakfast other than coffee in the morning? No, ma'am, there's no breakfast. Is there room service or anything? No, ma'am. You're lucky you're not hearing the singing. I'm going to head to the bar for a quiet afternoon drink. Any more singing, and I feel like my head might explode. Okay, what is going on? Customers are having dinner, and all of a sudden she breaks into this music. Totally unexpected. Oh, totally. Yeah, she just sits there and absolutely Wheels revels away. in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, what the fuck? Seriously, I've seen enough for one day. Just, you're going to have to lay that down somewhere. Where's she going now? She's not going to sing. No, yes. not, not in, in here. here. Yes, sir. You are kidding me. I thought these guests in here were the lucky ones. <laughs> I did, too. The same numbers? Exact same. She's a nut the job. Exact same, Gordon, yes. My name is Callie, for those of you that don't know. I do a little entertaining here. Got any share fans in the audience? Oh, my God. Hey, thank you. With dinner service and the terrible karaoke concert finally over, it's time to get the chef and the management together and find out what on earth is going on here. Let's get one thing absolute certain. It is not a taste of Tuscany. It's not funny. It's a clusterfuck. So are you are you are you proud of this? No, I so told you. Because I'm not allowed to change anything. Oh my god. I feel like there is many pricing issues here. There are definitely changes that have to happen. You're amazing. It's just total horseshit. It's just total horseshit. You know? It's you just like. Are you lying? No, we work within the constraints that I'm allowed to work in. Oh, me, constraints me, this should all my been ass. This should have been constraints all Constraints my yeah, ass. Pretty much. You have done nothing since you came in here but talk about me behind my back, try to set me up to fail every fucking day. Why and do I want to make you look I like don't know. Well, I know. wish the hell I did know, but I've got several people we can line up and we'll tell them exactly what you said I, to them. I imagine we will, you know. Then I can hear the no same thing about you. Bullshit. You know, I'll leave, and the only thing you'll say, the parting words, not to me, is I hope he hangs himself. Now, how yes. horrible is that when I'm doing an event here? Well, I'll tell you how horrible it is. About as horrible as when somebody hires all new people and tells each and every one of them that she's a bitch to work for, you can't work her, but hang in there because in six months, I'll be running this place and she'll be gone. I mean, literally, right out of the box. Right out of the box. So there you go. You so have that's what no... it all goes back to. Yeah, because that's when I found out what an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. I got to worry about my back continuously with you. What? This major miracle man that was supposed to come in here and double and triple this business when there's been no change whatsoever. None. Was I allowed but to that, make any changes? Like, direct, dramatically you, well, you make wanted any to, changes? You wanted to hire new people, which you did. Of course, you told people. each and every one of them that they shouldn't work for me. Oh, for God's sake. Is that true? There was the impression given that Callie would no longer be here whenever oh we were brought she over She owns here. the yes. place. Why were you suggesting that she's not going to be here after Sierra starts? I don't recall that. <laughs> Poor shit. Wow. It just wasn't what? her. She all, it wasn't right. her. It was Annie. It you was Kristen. Really... It was everybody. Oh, my God. Does the general manager badmouth the owner behind her back? Yes. 
course she doesn't trust you if you're going to bad mouth behind your back. If you were the owner, what would you do? I would fire that person that bad mouthed me. You're fired. I think I'm leaving. I, I was just fired. Now, Callie, I'm sorry. You've already failed. And you need a fall guy. OK, you got me. You run it. You step up to the plate. Good luck. I'm leaving, too. I'm out of here. I feel betrayed. And if the bitch thinks I'm going to stay, she's nuts. You know, I don't mind Callie yelling at me. It's fine. She finally got it off her fucking chest. But she doesn't trust anybody. You know, everybody's burned her in her history. I don't know. I didn't burn her. It felt good to fire him because it's been a cancer here at the hotel. And now the tumor's been cut out, and we're going to be in better shape. Zan just been fired, and the level of animosity and the friction between those two is extraordinary. But the question is, what happens next? I had a rough night's sleep with that bloody share tune going round and round my head. I'm hoping I can wash that tune out of my brain with a quick swim. And that's not all I'd like to forget. My first day at Maison was crazy. Within hours of my arrival, the general manager was fired. What an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. And I had to endure torture by Kalioki. I really didn't mean to hurt you. Today has got to be better than yesterday. Let's hope the pool guy came. The pool is still dirty. What the hell is that? What a joke. I mean, what a badly utilized space. I mean, you think of a hotel anywhere in New Mexico. God, one thing is an asset. This is pool. I mean, this space could be the best thing about this hotel, yet it's just abused. Dirty, not even a towel out here, so. Who the fuck would swim in there? That's disgusting. So, no morning swim for me, but at least I can enjoy a good breakfast to start the day. God, that's all they've got to offer. How depressing is that? This is crazy. I've got to find some breakfast. I'm starving, and cold coffee isn't going to do it. But I've heard there's an amazing farmer's market in town, so I'm going to quickly check it out. What a lovely little place. I've heard David from Maison's Kitchen runs a food truck here in his spare time. No deep fried calamari, I hope. I saw the line, I thought, uh -huh. wow, what are you serving? We got quesadillas, best in New Mexico. OK, brilliant. I have a little, little food truck with a buddy of mine, Chris, a little taste of New Mexico. This is one of our favorites right here, the cucumber lime. That's perfect. Little mint. Mm. But 100 degrees outside, that's perfect, right? Yes, it tastes huh? great. My goodness. Man, wow, that's delicious. So what's in the case of there? Cheese, yeah. green chili, <laughs> and acidero cheese. OK, you are my friend. Thank you. Mmm. That is delicious. Yeah. Now, uh, David, that's better than anything I've eaten in the hotel. You know that. Is yes, there? Uh, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, the food truck is my creative outlet. It's a place for me to at least express my ideas without having any borders. Well done. I'll see you later. Thank uh, you, good sir. job. Thank uh, you. Delicious. Thank you. Enjoy the food, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This town is stunning, full of charm and local color. It's such a shame the hotel reflects none of that. I've got to find a way to get Callie to embrace New Mexico and make the most of what her hotel has to offer. How are you feeling? I feel OK. I think it's important for you to understand the bigger picture. OK. Yeah, keep in with me, please, thank you. Hopefully, what I have planned will open Callie's eyes. Callie, this is some of your guests. I'd like you to share your experiences. Why don't we start off with you first, please? First impressions are, are important to me, and, and the, the very first thing I had to do was sign a, a cleaning waiver, and it, it just it makes the assumption that I'm not going to be clean. That assumption was it was just a tough first impression. Yes, a valid point. Waivers are for bungee jumps. At your peril. Uh, that whole thing for me wasn't to make you think that I didn't think that you were clean. It was. I had someone come in and throw red wine all over the Venetian plaster, and I thought that I should charge them for that. But you're punishing wasn't... every other guest well, on the back I, of the sins mean... of one guest, and it's not right. You know, you can't penalize future business on the back of one idiot. So, It appears that there's no thought into what the customer's going to experience. For instance, um, the first thing on a hot day, you want to go into the pool. Um, and we looked out to the pool, and, it, and, it, and it's right now it's the same way. It's got um, a lot of leaves and it's dirty, so it, maybe it's not open, but how can it not be open? 
Yes, a valid point. Madam, please. We were in the lounge for dinner, and when you were singing, we couldn't have a conversation. It's just not appropriate for an upscale, intimate, fine dining experience. I feel like you're very focused on the performance, but you're not really focused on your guests. Very interesting. Sir, anything that goes wrong with the restaurant when you're singing, you're too busy singing and not caring about your guests. I would pay you a hundred bucks not to sing. As long as you are focused on your singing career and not on your restaurant and hotel career, my wife and I won't be back. I don't agree. I have quite a bit of people that come here to hear me sing. Guest feedback is critical. It's about turning that negativity into something positive. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a very special lady, Nilu Matamid. She is the features director and the senior correspondent for Travel and Leisure magazine. Nilu, um, give us a little insight to your stay, please. One of the things that we look at is whether a hotel has a sense of place, whether it's maximizing the value that that beautiful setting that it's in has. You mentioned the pool. That's one great example of a moment where you have a potential great asset here that is being underutilized, and it's kind of underwhelming. There's a reason why hotel schools exist. So it's not a hobby, it's a business. There is one question I'd like to ask you all. Would you come back to stay in this hotel again? Please raise your hands. No one. Um, thank you to you all. Your feedback has been absolutely pivotal. I uh, appreciate it. I was sending a message that I didn't realize I was sending and didn't want to send. I want people to come here. I want them to feel welcomed. Are you starting to understand? I am. You are? I am. You're worrying about the wrong things. The biggest issue you have is understanding who's number one. The guests have to be number one, not Kelly. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. If you can change that, this place has every chance of becoming a big success. Can you change? Will you help me? I, I will help you, but you've got to start listening. I can do it. I can. I hope so. Coming up. That's awesome! The biggest transformation in the history of Hotel Hell. Stop. And a shocking twist. Where's all my shit? It's been a tough week at Maison de Messia, but I believe Callie is finally committed to putting her guests first. I can do it. I can. So, overnight, my design team have pulled off an incredible transformation, which I can't wait to share with Callie and her staff. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Please turn around. Oh, wow. A stunning yeah. sign. Wow. Wow. Now, when you drive by, it tells you... What we are. The Sande Messia Hotel and Restaurant. Gorgeous, right? Very. Beautiful. Now, everybody that goes by is not going to wonder, huh, wonder whose nice house that is. Are you ready to see inside? Oh, we are. Right. <laughs> because this, you're going to absolutely love. Morning, everybody. Look how beautiful. How are we? Oh, wait, cool. Welcome to your new hotel breakfast buffet. Wow. Remember what breakfast used to be like? We had cold coffee. Now, you have a very traditional, stunning breakfast buffet. That will be served in crisp white linens not those horrible plastic cloths. And that's not all. I reached out and got an amazing, local, talented breakfast chef. Let me introduce you to him. Meet David, our breakfast chef. Wow, David. <laughs> Hi, David. Hey. Hi, David. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. I, I feel great right now. I'm loving the recipes, and I'm, I'm really excited to be in the kitchen right now. Kelly. Yes, sir. I think that's a much better way of using that stage than a karaoke evening. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome. To you, sweet. Thank you. Beautiful. Very cool. Wow. Get in there. Very cool. Wow. 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 Very, nice. very cool. So we've incorporated some of the local colors and brought them in to this boutique hotel. Kelly, how are you feeling? Amazed. Room 205 is, is an amazing, amazing room. It, it's a New Mexico feel. And I know it's not beige, but you don't mind, do you? No, no, not no. at all. I think it's gorgeous. It I do. Is. The walls are still beautiful, and yet we have all this color, and, and, and it goes so well with the area that we're in. I've added color, but there's something I've taken away. There are no more waivers for your guests to sign. Is that good with you, Kelly? Good. <laughs> it's awesome. The front desk no longer has waivers, and the new rooms are colorful. They fit 
with exactly where we are in this historic district, I am very proud to show people the new rooms. I've got one very small thing to show you. You ready? Yes. We are. This you're gonna love. Oh, it's out here. Now, that's what I call a pool. Yes, oh, it is. Oh, my God. Remember, there was leaves and crap everywhere. Now, welcome to one of the hippest, one of the coolest pools anywhere in New Mexico. That is the oasis in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Gone is that hideous fence and replaced it with new turf and pool furniture to die for. Beautiful. It is. It is. People will just want to come and hang out here now, man. Bam, this is awesome. The pool, absolutely beautiful. Never seen anything like it. If we don't have pool parties now, then something's wrong. This is your fantastic cabana area. Gone is the stage. If you want to sing, Kelly, do it in the shower. <laughs> Can I have a margarita, Carlos? <laughs> I'll be serving a lot of drinks out here. Uh, I'm hoping the business is going to absolutely kick off with this wonderful pool. Now that you have a stunning outside area, let me introduce you to your new poolside menu. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Poolside. So you start off with a lovely, refreshing tomato gazpacho, beautifully marinated, seasoned lovely with extra virgin olive oil. Fish tacos as well. Oh, I'm going to eat all that. Yes. <laughs> and delicious fruit kebabs. Oh, this is great. Wonderful fresh fruit, mango, orange, lime, coconut, and seasoned with those wonderful green local chilies. A taste of New Mexico, <laughs> not Tuscany, Kelly. Outstanding. The tomato gazpacho is, is is magnificent. I'm very proud to cook this food. It makes sense, and it goes with New Mexico. I think it's excellent. Have a good look at the menu. Get used to it, because we're going to be pushing it big time. <sighs> See you in a minute. This makeover is the biggest I've done in any of the hotels I've visited. There's over $150,000 worth of upgrades, and I've never been happier with the improvements. It's exactly what the guests need. If I was Kelly, I'd be over the moon. Green chilies, pecans, everything that New Mexico is about, we have it on the menu. We have the guacamole, we have the salsa. What do I do with the five cases of hamburger buns that I just brought in? And, and even more, hey, what, we want to spend an hour putting things away every night and then bring them out every morning. This is what Ramsey gave the hotel. Labor, 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 labor. <laughs> Who do I hire to do that? This is a lot of work. I can't, I can't. I, I love can't pecans. deal with it. <laughs> you gotta go. Oh my God. There's things that I'm concerned about. The pool's outstanding. It's scary to me because I've got a pretty big job ahead of me now. And the linens, major pain in the ass. So many things that I'm gonna have to do that right now, you know, I'm really like freaking out over these. And what I'm gonna do is raise prices. Callie is a little overwhelmed right now. I do believe she likes the fact that it's more New Mexican. Jesus, God Almighty. But Callie's Callie. Where's all my shit? Where's all my shit? What does that mean? <laughs> the, all the other stuff that you took away. Uh, what stuff? Tell me. The, the, oh, oh, the tapestries. Oh, uh, and I know uh, you took down all the grapes. Yes. Which is, it was covering a pretty big hole in that wall. Uh, let's show me. Show me what we, what oh, we, it's whinging, not catastrophic. What we whinging about. Oh, is no, that what you're worried about? Is a plastic yeah. bunch of grapes? To hide okay. this where somebody hit it with a table? We can get your grapes back and you can stick plastic grapes back on the wall. Let me show you something for two seconds. I want to show you something really important. Just have a look at that out there. How beautiful know, is that? It's gorgeous. It's exactly yeah. what your guests need and want. Let me show you something. Oh, oh, there it is. I look at that amazing stuff there. And I look at this pile of shit in here. And you're starting to create a fuss. Forgetting that this hotel is about the guests, and you start putting the team on edge because you want plastic grapes, here's what I'm going to do for you. In 15 minutes, I will clear all that furniture, OK, and I'll put it back in my van, and this shit here, I'll put back in there. Let me show you something. Oh, oh there it is. I look at that amazing stuff there, and I look at this pile of shit in here and you're starting to create a fuss. Here's what I'm going to do for you. In 15 minutes, I will clear all that furniture, OK, and I'll put it back in my van, and this shit here, I'll put back in there. 
I am. I am. Ex should we get for you? Should we, should we get in there and look for your grapes? No. Okay. I am more grateful than you can okay. possibly. Well, then you have a very bizarre way of showing it. That's all. Thank you, Kelly. Sometimes what I say with the best intentions is taken with the worst. And to be aware of that is very good because that just means that I'm going to be able to start thinking the thought all the way through before it comes out of my mouth. I'm glad Kelly's grateful, but I am worried as soon as I leave, she'll be back to her old ways. Plastic grapes won't kill her business, but if she carries on singing, that might. You mustn't take this the wrong way, and I hope you don't, but I grew up with a dad that was constantly moving our family in and out of working men's clubs, bars, and singing every fucking weekend. Seeing him ruin his life, trying to be someone he was never going to be. The other night, I watched you move from here to here. I thought, Christ, you shouldn't be doing this in here. I think there's a level of class about you, the way you hold yourself, the way you dress, the way you, you appear. I don't want to see you being laughed at. I, <clears throat> I really don't know how to, to, uh, to react, but obviously, um... Every time you're singing, you're not, not running your time. I totally agree with and you. Right now. It needs to be run. OK, that makes sense to me. Good. OK. I think Kelly's ready for a fresh start. So I invited lots of new guests and a local band for Maison's first ever pool party. Hi. Table four, four, five? No, 15. 15. 15? 15. How are we? Hi. Are you good? Yeah. Having fun? Yeah. Gorgeous place, right? Yeah. Love it. Enjoy. Have fun. The pool party crowd are loving all the changes. The fish tacos are yummy. Mm -hmm. awesome. They're loving the food, guys, yes? Keep it going, yes? You know my first job when I was 18? Pot wash, starters, running. But I wasn't running to glamorous pools like you're about to run to. <laughs> and the new guests are loving the colourful rooms. Oh, oh wow. It's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Oh, look, that's coming. I think this will work. People will like this idea. It's really neat to have something like this in Las Cruces, because there's nothing like this. So. We don't have to leave town. We're here. We're Vacation. Here. <laughs> I think Kelly's heart is in the right place, but she has a lot to learn about running her hotel. I'd like to introduce you to a very special man, Mr. Jeff Mayhem. Nice Hi. to meet you. Likewise. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm, I'm wonderful. Now, this man has a wealth of experience, spanning nearly three decades of running some of the most prestigious and luxurious boutique hotels in New Mexico. Jeff's a former innkeeper of the year. He's not just good, he's one of the best. He knows this business inside out. After all, he does something so well that he's innkeeper of the year. I want my guest to get the experience that his guests get. I'm going to leave you two alone to spend some valuable time. OK, all great. Right. We Thanks, look Jeff. forward to working with it. Thank you. So let's talk. OK. Now, Kelly, clearly she can't turn back time, but she can insist on this place having a bright future. On one condition, she stays off that bloody microphone and makes her guess the stars and not her bloody singing. Can she do it? That's the million dollar question. Coming up, I finally put Kelly's singing career on ice. Hey, baby, it's the end of a long week at Maison de Messia. I'm really happy with the changes at the hotel, but it could still all fall apart if, instead of stepping up as general manager, Kelly steps back onto the stage. It's time for me to say goodbye. If you have that little urge that you start getting the tremors and you feel a need for the mic, I want you to run into the freezer. Stay there two seconds. <laughs> I put your microphone in a block of ice. Now, this <laughs> will give you two or three hours to defrost, <laughs> which will give you a chance yes. to understand that the guests are the stars. I understand okay. that. I want you to seize these changes and run this stunning boutique hotel. I will. Thank you. Thank you. I found out from Gordon that I don't have a singing career, and that's OK. I, this is my career. If I could turn back time. Can't get that bloody song out of my mind. <laughs> Since my visit, bookings at Maison de Messia have surged. Welcome to Maison de Messia. Two for dinner? Yes. The new guests are enjoying the pool and the new menus. It's delicious. Really impressive. I didn't even know this place was here. 
And Kelly is learning how to be a proper general manager. I appreciate you coming. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Thank you. I really am very grateful. The man knows what he's doing. Thank God for Gordon Ramsay. Tonight on Hotel Hell, a near-fatal accident has left Mississippi hotel owners in a desperate situation. I broke both of my ankles and my back in two places. The business is failing, and with not enough money coming in, this married couple have lost their home. You live in here? Yes. There's not even a window. You have to do what you have to do. If I don't do something soon, they will lose everything. We have two children. I would like for them not to have to worry about their mom and dad. You've let this business swallow the both of you up. I think you deserve something better. I only hope I'm not too late. Hotel Chester is located in Starkville, Mississippi, home to the Mississippi State University. Husband and wife, David and Suki Mollendor, bought the hotel in 2000. Before buying the Chester, David traveled the world as a hotel troubleshooter. Well, I've worked in the hotel industry 39 years. Thank you for calling Hotel Chester. Wanted to try and settle down and give our kids one stable place to be. Oh. One of us got to get taller. <laughs> to begin with, a 36-bedroom hotel was a real success, packed with students and locals. How you doing? Good. <laughs> <laughs> then a sudden tragedy hit the family. David was coming home and was uh, involved in a, a major auto accident. We thought we lost him. That changed all of us it's overnight. He crushed his feet and was bedridden for almost six months. It's a little dated. The report is very dated. In David's absence, standards dropped and customers stopped coming. Well, we were losing so much money that I had to file for bankruptcy. The financial losses have been so bad, the bank foreclosed on their home. So now they're living in the hotel. Living in the hotel, working together in the hotel. I feel tired and I feel uh, out of sync with the world. They couldn't afford payroll, so Suki left her job in real estate and took over as chef and temporary manager. It was my idea that we open a sushi restaurant. Never worked in any restaurant kitchens before in my entire life. But I knew how to make the sushi. My mom was confused. But despite her best intentions, with no formal training, oh. she's struggling. Oh. Uh -oh. My knife. Suki spends all her time in the hotel, so she's blind to the tens of thousands of students and tourists who could be potential customers. And the hotel's bedrooms and dining room are empty most nights. I just need those entrees. Yeah, but I guess they're coming. You know, I see it in my parents' eyes. I see that they're physically exhausted, that they're mentally drained. My mom, she used to be lively, vibrant. She's honestly half than she used to be. Man, I forget. I'm losing my mind. When I came to this place, I was 180 pounds of twisted blue steel, sex appeal, and mucho hell. Then this old bitch has worn me down to 200 pounds of flab, gab, and total no mas. With almost no money coming into the hotel, David and Suki are hanging on by a very thin thread. I need Gordon to help my parents because if this hotel doesn't change, it's we lose everything. This is it. I'm in Starkville, Mississippi's college town. I'm on my way to the Hotel Chester, Mississippi State University, founded in 1878. Any hotel with a college on their doorstep should be absolutely thriving, not just for the students, but with their parents as well. I can't wait to check into the Hotel Chester. Where is this place? I can't even see the sign. OK, I'm pulling over here. Got to know where it is. How are you? 
I'm looking for the Hotel Chester. I've never been there before. Yeah, You've never been there? It's one yeah, I'll down. find yeah. it. I've gone round three times. It's easy to miss. It's easy to miss. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't see any signs. Well, there may be one sign, but I mean, it's not, right. it's not too big. Huh? Okay, great. <laughs> Bring up the Excellent. Thank you. Enjoy. The students never go to the Chester, despite the fact it's right next to the campus. Weird. There we are, there. Historic Hotel Chester entrance. Well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. It's madness. Finally. Morning, sir. Hey, good how are morning. you? How are you? Good to see you, Gordon. Good to see you, and I'm David Gordon. David, nice to see you. Well, I finally found the place. That is so confusing there. You know that? There's no sign on Main Street. I drove straight by. And see him on the corner of the building? A tiny sign saying it's historic. That, that's what's historic about oh, it. That's, it's, that's, that's historically been a bad entrance. Now we have you in an executive king room. And then here's two keys for you, because I'm giving you two because men don't follow instructions as well as women. Okay. Or in case you get lucky, hell yes. <laughs> So you're a hands-on owner. Uh, you run the desk all by yourself? My wife is the chef. She's taught herself. You can meet lady? Well, can I finish my spiel? Oh, I thought you'd already finished. So uh, breakfast is included. We do have fresh cut fruit. That's nice to know, fresh cut fruit. We, what uh, would be the alternative? Canned? No. Uh, no fruit, I think. Oh. Be the <laughs> I love your sense of humor. <laughs> it's dry and very funny. Fresh cut fruit for breakfast. Yes, sir. Nice. Now, I just want you to know I'm not always at the desk. OK. But you'll be able to recognize me even if I'm walking away from you, because I'm the one who looks like he's riding a chicken. Riding a chicken? Yeah. I've never ridden a chicken. You have to show. Oh. Well, you just have to look at my legs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get Suki, OK? OK, great. That poor chicken. OK, now. I've got a guest that wants to meet you. Oh, okay. uh oh, what do you do with that? I am making tamago. Gordon is here to help us out, and I'm terrified, but at the same time, I, I'm so excited. Okay. Oh. Hi. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. And don't worry, I've had worse than wet hands. Nice to meet you. I washed my hands. Uh, that's very kind. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, and Thank you. Suki, right? Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. <laughs> What's it like working with your wife? I love my wife, so it's mm -hmm. nice to be around her until she gets her nose out of joint. She has a chef's temperament. If okay. you're not familiar with it, right, they, well. they can fly off the handle pretty easy. What's your background? I'm a hotel guy. I was in Vietnam, and I went to so hotel, hotel school. So you qualified uh, as a hotelier? Well, so in my view, yeah. Well, that's great. That's good, good to hear. <laughs> Graduated with a major in hotel and restaurant management, and I've been in the business almost 40 years. So, in a nutshell, what's wrong with the hotel? That's a question. We're not sure. <clears throat> we don't think it's a quality issue. Uh, neither for our rooms or our food and, and beverage. Why don't you both show me to the room? OK. I've been a general manager of a lot of hotels. I eventually became a turnaround guy to take on problem properties. So my big surprise here is that I'm having a hell of a time trying to turn this thing around. We just call it an executive oh. king. Oh, dear. OK. This is it? Yes, sir. What is that, swing? It's a uh, leather, but it's a uh, rough leather and very difficult to clean. And it's so bland. I mean, it's like a cheap motel chain. I feel like I'm in the witness protection program. This is depressing here. So when was the last time the roof was touched? 2003. 2003, so 10 years ago. Yeah. It feels like something out of the 1970s. Our hotel rooms are dated, you know, we try to call it period furniture. Yeah, I don't know what to say. It always tells you that. A place is on the decline when you walk in, you've got walls that are a mess, scuffs everywhere, and big marks on the sofas that you're expected to pay good money to sit down in. So far, I'm not digging it. I'm going to unpack, and then I'd like to come down and um, have a bite to eat. Suki, so what's your experience in the kitchen? My father had a sushi restaurant in Washington, D.C. Parents of a Japanese yeah. restaurant? Had. My did you father grow up in the passed kitchen? away. Of course. But did you work in the kitchen? No, just washing dishes. <laughs> 
Anyway, listen, I'm going to unpack. Thank you. OK, hey. Yeah. Thank Good you. to see you, likewise. Yes, and nice I'll pop down and have a bite to eat. OK? okay. Thank you. So, you know, I feel like the guy who walked into a bar with a big frog on his head, went up to the bar and asked the bartender for a drink. And the bartender said, man, I tell you, you got a problem, don't you? And the frog said, yeah, I'll I sure later, do. Babe. Can you cut this ward off my ass? <laughs> And God, can that man talk. Bars and restaurants in a vibrant college town like this are always packed at lunchtime. But this place is dead. I'm Lindsay. How are you? Good. There you go. Let me get you something to drink. Do you have some ice cold water? OK. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my darling. Um, what would you recommend? Strawberry field sushi is uh, very popular. It's a little bit sweeter. I'll try it. Las Vegas as an appetizer as well. And then, oh, the Sakura. Five individual rolls rolled into one. I don't know how you execute all that Japanese food on that menu when you're not trained. Doesn't quite make sense. Oh, my goodness. This is not good. There's not a lot of people in Starkville that like our sushi. It's a little bit different from what other places in Starkville have. Oh. God, that's slow. Suki runs her kitchen the way she wants to. It always takes too long in between tickets, but there was really nothing I could do about it. This food is taking way too long. I've been waiting over an hour for raw fish. Oh, my God. I can't take this anymore. Oh, God. Damn it. I'm at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, and I've been waiting for my lunch for a very long time. Damn it. Jeez. <laughs> I nodded off there. My God. Does the sushi usually take this long? Yes, sir. What is this one? Las Vegas. Ooh, oh, my God. Salmon, cream, cream cheese, and asparagus, and then it's deep fried and uh, comes with a jalapenos. Fried salmon with cream cheese. It's disgusting. What a strange combination. Very weird. It doesn't work for me, that one. I mean, it's just um, greasy. You um, can get this out of the way. As quick as possible. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. This is dreadful. My first impressions of the food here is that it's as bad as the rooms. Sakura. Sakura. And there's cream cheese in the middle. Look at that thing. So it's pretty big, right? So how are you supposed to get it in your mouth? I've never eaten it before. Let's try. Come on. Me? We're in this together. Oh, no, you ordered this one all on your own. That's yours. You sure there? Ready? Open wide, please. Wait, there is no way this is gonna fit my mouth. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Uh-uh, I can't do it. Now I know how my granddad feels when he puts his new teeth in. <laughs> Can uh, I throw uh, it away now? Yeah. So you took one little bite? I did. Damn. Disaster. Total disaster. How did it taste, by the way? I'm very good. The Sakura is very chewy. Suki does try her best, but she has no idea what she's doing. What's wrong with the Sakura? Bland, ugly, chewy, strange combination. Chewy. Yep. And impossible to put in your mouth. Let me tell you about my sushi. I'm not a Morimoto or Nobu. Absolutely not. I'm doing my best, and I respect rice. What is this one? Strawberry field. Now look at that. Strawberry on sushi. I'm behalf of every Japanese chef in America, I'd like to apologize. It's very weird. Which part is so just, you just weird? You, you wouldn't cover white tuna with strawberries and then glaze it. Strawberry fields. I'd rather fucking eat a beetle. It's too sweet. Strawberries don't belong with tuna. I am frustrated that Gordon does not like uh, my sushi. I've tried all I can. How you doing, honey bun? Uh, he doesn't like any. 
He doesn't like any of it. No. <laughs> so, truthfully, what is wrong with this place? Lack of business. So on an average weekend, how many guests would you do? On a busy weekend, maybe 12 people. Are they in-house guests, hotel Usually. guests? Usually. So virtually nobody from the outside? Correct. Jesus. Anyway, where are the owners? Can you uh, tell me where they are? Sure. Thank you. They've got just 36 bedrooms, yet on a busy night, just 12 guests eat here. With food that bad, I'm not surprised. Congratulations on the longest lunch I've ever had in my entire cooking career. That was 97 minutes. Yeah, and half of it was raw. As a novice cook, why are you making sushi? It's crazy. I'm trying my best to, to at least introduce Mississippi. Let's eat a little bit healthier. There's nothing healthier with my lunch. Maybe a health warning. Surely you should be giving the locals what they want to eat. That's why they come. Well, no, no, talking no. to Lindsay, the only customers we get now are the ones staying in the hotel, which is practically no one. The business is on his ass. And how much debt are you in? Over nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred thousand dollars. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. So far, Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester has been a massive letdown. Hotel Chester entrance, well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. The dated, soulless rooms are awful. It's like a cheap motel chain. Strawberry on sushi. The sushi is the worst I've ever had. Wow. It's hideous. And David, the co-owner, has just admitted to me and to his wife that they're almost a million dollars in debt. $900,000. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. I'm deeply sorry, and I'm, I'm sad that you're upset. I'm not upset at you. David should not have been hiding the financial status from me. Finding out she's been kept in the dark has angered Suki. Dave, I, I don't know what we are doing. I do the spending side, and you do the paying side. I don't share the finances with Suki. This is getting ridiculous. Because I'm afraid of hurting Suki's feelings. Calm down. No, I'm not going to calm down. While the owners argue, guests who have heard about my visit are arriving at the Chester. For dinner, I'm just going to go to the restaurant, which is just straight shoot right back there, all right? OK. And tonight, the restaurant and hotel will be full of people for the first time in years. I feel sorry for all of them. How long have you been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. 45 minutes. My apologies. How long have you been waiting? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we've been here over in about an hour. An hour. So, I'm sorry. I've never seen anything like this before. It's insane how long these guests are waiting. So what table is this, Suki? Oh, pardon me. I'm sorry. No, I just asked what table are you doing? The very first table. The very first table. It's been well over an hour, and Suki is only working on the first table. She's really struggling, and yet Dave is not stepping in to lend a hand. So, you know, over an hour in the service. Would you go in and help her? I would, but, you know, that's just not my territory. Right. Unfortunately. It's like the hotel's falling apart around you. If someone needs you in the kitchen, in the bar, the reception, shouldn't you be multitasking? The uh, kitchen is her territory. Okay. Well, so, I'm just asking, it's your no, hotel. I, I know, and I appreciate that. Yeah. If the kitchen's not David's territory, then maybe the rooms are. It's like wow, touch the blinds, so and there's like That's dust all over it. Yeah, there's kind of a beat up family. Mm. Looks like it came out of someone's house when they died. This is definitely not supposed to <laughs> hang out. It seems to me that David has checked out. I don't understand what's going on here. This is not good. Suki okay. is totally out of her depth, having only dealt with one of the eight tables waiting for food. Oh, no. This is awful. Wow. What's wrong, darling? They said it wasn't cooked. Yeah. yeah. It's cold. Yeah, it needs more cooking. Mom, what's wrong? It's not cooked. You OK? I don't even want to get her in trouble. Why is she bursting into tears? You okay? I'm fine. What, the, the, help me understand. What's going on? No, I just... The fish is undercooked in the centre. I know, I know. I just, like, don't... Just, don't what? Um... What is it that I'm missing, the point? I don't understand why she's in there playing head chef. 
because we don't have anyone else. I mean, she became chef when my dad was in a car accident in 2008. He was bedridden for about six months, and then mom moved in to run the hotel the next day. My mom became a chef overnight. She came to the hotel, saw where she thought she was needed, and jumped in the kitchen. And ever since, she's been trying to make it work. And so how long has it been functioning like this? I mean, I think it's been in this state for about uh, two or three years. My dad has taken a step back and given up a little bit. OK. We have to be strong. Get I some am. fresh air. Get your eyes nice and bright, OK? okay? <laughs> Finally, I get it. The Hotel Chester has been in a tailspin since David's car accident. I wish Stuki or David had told me. Wow. The beer garden. Interesting. Suki is just trying to make this work as best she can, but she is failing miserably. And David has hotel knowledge, but since the accident, he has taken a back seat. This whole place feels lost. The owners, the restaurant, the bedrooms, even this garden feels abandoned, just like the dinner guests. The customers are getting so pissed off. I'm gonna have to do something, otherwise this place is gonna go crazy. The Hotel Chester in Starkville, Mississippi, is on the brink of financial disaster, and I finally found out why. My dad was in a car accident in 2008. David's car accident sent the hotel into a sharp decline. Oh, no. Suki is drowning in the kitchen, trying to keep the business afloat. Wait, how long have you been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. We've been here over in about an hour. While her husband, David, isn't taking the reins, I can't see the diner starve. So I've dashed over to the local supermarket. The least I can do to help poor Suki is to cook up a few sliders before the customers walk out. Those diners are going to get any food, trust me. Tonight, it's coming from me. That was ridiculous in there. An hour for appetizers. Crazy. So sorry about the delay. There's a little uh, beef slider from the barbecue in the garden. I don't want you guys washing away. Everybody got some food now? Feel a little bit better? The burgers have brought Suki enough time to get through the rest of dinner service without anyone walking out. After a long three hours, everyone has finally been fed. I'm sure Suki is as relieved as me that dinner service is over. How are you, Suki? Fine, fine. fine? Yes. That was a tough one. It was very tough. Yeah? Yes, sir. Why don't you guys get out of here, you go home, let's hook up first thing tomorrow morning. How far is home away from here? This is our home now, that room. What do you mean, this is your home? We live here. You live on site? Yes. You have an apartment here? No, right in there, there's a the handicap room. That's our, that's our home now. You live in the handicap room? Yes. Can you show me? Since Dave's accident, I gave up everything. We have no money, so we had no choice but to live in this room. You live in here? Yes. There's not even a fucking window. No. Suki, I had no idea things were this bad. Well, I have to do what you have to do. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, sometimes you have the bad times. Could you get David? OK. Please? I don't know what else to do. We have two children. I would like for them to be, um, not to have to worry about their mom and dad. OK. So. You were running this hotel. This was your baby. That's right. David? Yes. And sadly, you got involved in a tragic car accident. Yes. What happened? Yes. I, I broke both of my ankles and yes. my back in two places. We nearly lost him. I mean, you know, I was pretty busted up, so... I've been spending most of the past five years just recovering. Why did you sell your house? We couldn't make the payment, and... You foreclosed? Yes. That's terrible. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. And you come home every night now into this bedroom. Uh -huh. This is awful. It is no way to live. I think you deserve something better. I promise I'm going to help you fix this place. OK? Yes, sir. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Will you get some rest, please? Sometimes I will go seven days without stepping out of the hotel. And it's, uh, it's sad. I can't believe David and Suki have been living like this for years. I've never wanted to help two people so badly. 
I just hope I'm not too late. a rough night's sleep. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about David and Zuki downstairs where they are almost cooped up in that tiny room with no windows. I mean, my sleep was rough, but Christ, I can imagine going through that for three years like they've been doing. God. <sighs> David and Suki have sunk so far, they have lost sight of the outside world. If they lose this hotel, then they lose everything. <sighs> I need to show them the potential of this place before it's too late. It's like a sink. Oh. Come on. This is ridiculous. I can't even get my feet wet. David and Suki need to see how to make the Hotel Chester a success. I've got a plan. You've let this business swallow the both of you up. Yeah. It is like quicksand. Yeah, you've lost your way. Not only have you lost the connection with each other, but you've lost the connection out there. Out there. The town, the students, the community. Both of you, come with me. I've got something to show you. That can save the life of your hotel. In the car, please. When was the last time you two went out for lunch? I can't, I can't remember. remember. You've never been out for lunch together? No. No. Wow. I want to show David and Suki a couple of places that are extremely successful because they tap in to what the community wants. Thank you, Dan. Oh, wow. Uh, lunch, are you always this busy? It's usually busier, actually. On an average weekend, uh, for instance, um, in the middle of summer, how many covers do you do? Hundreds and thousands, probably. I mean, it gets so slam packed. Thanks, and thanks. And thank, thank you, sweet. Can you believe? A thousand people a day here. Mm. A day. Envious. Good, honest. Yeah. Mississippian food. I just want ten percent. You just want a hundred people a day. Yeah. Ten percent. Oh. I did not know that there were that many people eating now. I've got one more place to show David and Suki to really make sure they see there are plenty of businesses doing well in the town. How cool is this place? Oh, this, is, a, this is, is really popular. You know, since my accident, I really haven't gotten around town much. You know, this business is 100 meters from your front door. Thank you. Now, no, I don't. Please, how many covers are you doing a, a day? How many, what's the numbers? Um, about 200 a day. 200 a day. Customers and uh, weekends generally double that. Mm -hmm. So an average of 200 guests a day, 400 of the weekends, and families as well, early families, evenings? Yeah. A lot of our business revolves around uh, college students. Thank you. The purpose of this outing is to show you how these businesses are drawing from the university, how they are open to every market, and it does translate to the rooms. You have a potential gold mine sat there. You have the traffic. You've got to tap into the community. That's what you're not doing. I'm, I'm convinced that's correct. I thought we were always welcoming students. Maybe we were wrong. So let's say, uh, yes, yeah, definitely an eye opener. Now that I've shown David and Suki how much potential there is in Starkville, I need them to commit to turning the Hotel Chester around. That was nice. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I did too. To see it that busy for lunch was incredible. Well, the business is uh, booming there. So. David, you need to get your head back in the game. That's right. I got some great ideas, but you two have to be ready for change. Gordon, whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. <laughs> When I arrived at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, it was invisible on the main street. Hotel Chester entrance, well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. And failing to appeal to the people who could make it a success, the college students. I'm convinced Suki and David are now ready for change. Whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. So now it's time to reveal the new hotel to David and Suki and their team. Oh my god, look at that! Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. Sure as hell don't have to worry about finding it now. That's wonderful! Come we on. have a sign! Welcome to the new oh, Hotel okay. Chester. You're no longer hidden on the main street. Now, customers, locals, will identify that it is a hotel. Is it big enough for you, David? 
Elliot. I think it's really, really that great. There is the biggest marketing tool you'll ever need. I love it. Oh, this is so good. Should we have a look inside? Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what Gordon has done with the inside of the hotel. Are you ready? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Well, jump in. Go in, go in, go in. Oh, Please, oh, this is definitely <laughs> lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Yes, I love it. Gone is the drab and the dullness. Now this room has character. Isn't this beautiful? I'm genuinely thrilled. If I could, I'd do a somersault backwards, and then if Gordon had let me, I'd kiss him. And even if he doesn't, I may drag him in and give him a big old kiss right on the damn lips. <laughs> Megan, nice to see that you're happy. I'm very happy. Huh? It's more than I can have hoped for, and it seems to be the beginning of the end of our struggle. Do you think the parents of those 20,000 students yes. in the university will want to stay here now? Yes. All right, would you like to see one more room? Yes. 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 Let's go. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn, I love this room. Beautiful. I'm in a dream. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I can't ask more. Suki, this is not a chain hotel. This is your no, hotel. No, that's like right. Said, something that's to be proud of. Right. Oh. That's awesome. I've got something else to show you. This one, you're going to absolutely love. Ready? So excited. Oh. Please, I'd like to welcome you all to your stunning beer garden. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh. oh yes. This is what I call a beer garden. Damn! Oh, yeah! OK. Modern benches. So we have communal benches as well, large parties, uh, families. Additional space there as well we've taken advantage of. Stunning furniture. That's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. You go into the gazebo, we have the most amazing local beers. Oh, <laughs> craft beers on oh, tap. Nice. And these stunning craft beers that can rotate oh. local beers to sort of promote stuff locally. That's awesome. The beer garden is awesome. I'm going to christen it myself, and somebody's going to have to carry me out of it before we open the doors to the public. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. Please, come with me. Yes, sir. I love this garden out here. Welcome to the new Hotel Chester's stunning beer gardens food. This hotel is in a vibrant college town in the heart of Mississippi. So I've created a menu that will attract a younger crowd and highlight southern comfort food. Gone is the fusion confusion. <laughs> Suki, I'm sorry, all gone. Good. Southern food fits the location. How can we be in Southville and not have stunning fried green tomatoes? Next to that, we have oyster bacon po' boy. Fried crispy oysters, crispy bacon with a stunning spicy remoulade. And Gordon's Burger. He's a chef, Ooh. and he, from time to time, comes up with some stunning recipes for burgers. Uh, this burger <laughs> recipe um, is featured in Planet Hollywood in Vegas, and it is to die for. The new menu complements the state of Mississippi. I think it really suits the beer garden. Wonderful, wonderful idea. Suki, I have something for you that's going to make your life in the kitchen a whole lot easier. Bear with you one second, please. Now, I've got someone I'd like to introduce you to. Uh, someone who's very special with two uh, unique assistants. Come through, please. Say hello to Enrica Williams. Now, she'll be Hotel Chester's new head chef. This lady is a very experienced chef, and she absolutely knows her stuff. I'm covering Enrica's salary. I'm taking care of that until this place picks up and you can afford to keep it yourself. You okay, sir? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Having Suki in the kitchen kind of broke my heart every day, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know the chef and her apprentices and giving them all the support I possibly can. Suki, I want you to keep cooking, but I want you to have a bit of fun with it. And here's how it's going to work. Suki's Rabata Grill. Skewers, chicken, beef, shrimp, yeah. with garlic, yeah. ginger, soy, marinade. That's a Rabata, it's a personal touch. I love it. I love the change. Rabata is classic Japanese barbecue. When you think of a Rabata Grill, you think marinated, Japanese style. It's easy to execute. And do you know what? It cuts a little bit of slack in the kitchen. It gives the kitchen a bit of time. <laughs> now, all of you, sit down and okay. tuck in. Thank you so much. Please. Thanks, Gordon. That looks so damn good. Doesn't it? With word out to the locals and the college students about the Chester's new vibe, 
This hotel is ready for business. How are y'all doing? Checking in? Yes. Checking in for two under Sanford. As the new younger clientele begin checking in, it's clear the renovated rooms are a hit. This is How awesome. How nice is this? It feels so big and so bright. It's just wow. We need one of these comfort rooms at home. While the rooms are proven to impress, the renovated beer garden is also creating a buzz with students, parents, and locals. We need to get a little taste. Yeah, everybody needs to order something different. <laughs> Fried green tomatoes. Know. Do you want anything from the grill? That's my, uh, my little one. one of everything. What are you drinking, buddy? David seems reinvigorated as an owner and is really getting into it. Let me get your glasses. Just call them out to me. I'm thrilled to death. Just looking out there and seeing people eating good food and drinking good craft beers and conversing is uh, exactly the kind of environment I wanted out there. I need a burger medium, a fish and chips, pulled cool pork. And without Suki in the kitchen, the new head chef is doing a fantastic job of making wonderful meals and getting them out in a timely manner. That is it for high one. So now we're working high two. Make him sweat, God damn it! There you go. All right, buddy. The biggest thing Gordon has done is giving me a new sense of confidence and an opportunity to have my wife be my wife again. My favorite has been the uh, Gordon's hamburger. And I'm not a hamburger eater, and it's a fantastic and it's a money back guarantee. I'll give you money back if you don't like it. Okay, thank you. That's the best burger in Starkville without a close second. It is. It is so, this is the best so of everything. Now that the Hotel Chester is catering to what the locals want, and with Suki and David embracing the changes, I know my job here is almost done. Time to say goodbye. Hey, Gordon. I'm going to miss you both. We're going to miss you too. Look after each other. Embrace these students, their parents, and get this hotel full. When I see you behind that bar serving pints, yes, that sir. for me is you and your element. All right. Take care of yourselves. Yes, sir. OK? Well done, darling. Seeing you bouncing around out there tonight, happy in front of customers rather than stressed. Good to see you. Take care of yourself. <sighs> wow. Oh. I'm sorry, I forgot one little thing. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. One little thing before I go. The relaunch of the Hotel Chester is a huge success. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. Now Suki and David are on their way to making this hotel the talk of the town. Get in the car, please. But before I leave, I have one more surprise for them. Right, there's one more little thing I wanted to show you. Isn't this place beautiful? That gorgeous pool there. Both of you, come in for two seconds. Now, living in that tiny room with no windows is not the way to live. So, this is your new apartment. I rented this for the next six months, and I'm sure when the business kicks off, you'll have sufficient funds to oh, rent this apartment. Oh, I love it. Open plan kitchen, lounge. Have a quick look at the bedrooms through there. Beautiful. This is just what we really needed for Dave and me to get away. Uh, there we go. Oh, Dave, this is nice. Oh, this is, this this is, is nice. so sweet. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Some time out. That is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. That's awesome. Um, just damn flabbergasted, actually. Being on site and not having time out of your hotel, you were blind to the potential on your doorstep. It was ridiculous. Thank you. We thought Gordon was just coming here to help us with the business. He ended up being helping us emotionally, our marriage. He very much wanted for us to be together, and that was so lovely. That's pretty damn awesome, no question mm, about it. Really, really nice. Yes. Thank you again. Now I'm going to hug you too. <laughs> Take care of you. Okay. I'm Spend... gonna kiss you too. So... <laughs> Spend some quality time together. Uh, you deserve it. Good night and good luck. All right. Bye, Gordon. Bye bye now. It's a new start for me, and it's just definitely a new start for Suki. This is so I'm gonna sweet. get naked in the pool right now. <laughs> it's so nice to see two people finally happy. Strawberries on fucking sushi. What was she thinking? 
Since my visit, the Hotel Chester's bookings have gone up. Have y'all stayed with us before? No, this is the first time. And the guests are enjoying the new improvements. It's just not generic, run of the mill. I think, I think this is something special yeah. now. It does feel special. Like it's, it's actually had a touch of care given yeah. to it. With the new menu and beer garden, the hotel has become a local hit with the college kids. I don't know what this yeah. is, but I enjoy it. Craft beer you had? Uh huh. I mean, it was outstanding. You was know? it? Yes. I mean, the local brewery, Mississippi, plus you had a mix of everything. Oh, so you had the uh, sampler. Had the, sampler. Sampler was here. the new buzz around town means the Hotel Chester is now bringing in thousands of guests every weekend. And David and Suki are working as a team again. Next March 8th, was it booked? for a reception for about 150 to 200 people. So they want all about 36 rooms for two nights. Gordon has saved us. Our relationship as husband and wife is better. We'll be, we are now partners. I'm gonna give y'all a hug. Come on, Jill. Get so Come on, guys. What Gordon has done for us means everything to us. And I think Gordon's helped to put the hotel on the map. Let's go suck face for a while. Of the <laughs> Tonight on Hotel Hell, in a small Connecticut town, a family legacy is on the brink of disaster. And you think this is what your father wanted? Absolutely not. You're a mean, horrible bitch. A sibling rivalry has torn the hardesty family apart. Not even love for each other. It is shocking. She wants things done her way. I'm in charge of the ship. Give a fuck how long? No, my train. With the owners at each other's throats. Shut the fuck up! This once thriving country inn may have to shut its doors forever. Sell it! of Woodbury, Connecticut, stands the state's oldest inn, the Curtis House. Open in 1736, the 16-bedroom inn has been owned and run by the Hardesty family for nearly 60 years and is currently being run by Chris Hardesty and his sister, TJ. The Curtis House is haunted. See, the rooms will all be done and the comforters will be nice and neat and tidy and you can go back in five minutes later and it looks like somebody rolled across it. I would walk by a table and two minutes later a plate would fly off of it. I went to light the fireplace and it blew up on me and I got burns. There are spirits here. But spirits aren't paying guests and the Curtis House bedrooms are empty most nights. Right now I would say we're about $100,000 in debt. My dad recently passed away. He had a firm belief that my brother and I could take over the inn. It just left me more determined to succeed. Failing to continue their father's success with the inn has destroyed Chris and TJ's relationship. They hardly ever speak, and when they do, they fight. You're a mean, horrible bitch. If we were married, we'd probably be divorced by now. You come off like this every time, all the time. She's controlling. She wants things done her way. Because when I sit there and give a rule, I want the rule followed. My brother frustrates me to the point where sometimes I would like to just bop him over the head to get rid of some frustrations. Another woman who doesn't listen to a fucking thing I say. Chris and TJ's frustrations with each other and their failing business have made the inn hell for staff. No, my tray. No, my tray. I just well, I don't give a fuck. They just don't care. If you look at your boss who doesn't care, why are you going to care? TJ's not a great leader. She yells at you. I've never heard a thank you. A thank you can go a long way. Chris, he's just a fat, lazy slob. I shit everywhere. We will get complaints from the customers. We will have problems with dishes. It's just shrugged off. He doesn't give a crap. I've lost respect for TJ and Christopher. We've lost a lot of customers because of management. Since TJ and Chris both took over, everything is going downhill. It has a stain on my pillow. Disgusting. Look at this. Wow. We'll close the bathroom door. Like a rusted soap holder. Did you have your tetanus shot? Everything wow. sucked. Give me another plate without ants on it. I would never come here again. If things don't improve, and fast, a family legacy could come to a tragic end. The Curtis House is a, a huge thing to our family. We've been here for 59 years. We've all pretty much grown up here. Curtis House is like my second home. It has been all these years, the same with my mother and my aunts. 
If the Curtis House shut down, we would really feel like we lost a part of our family. I'm on my way to the Curtis House. It's Connecticut's oldest inn. I'm excited about it because it's supposed to be one of New England's historical gems. There's nothing wrong with being the oldest. It just depends how much Botox you've had. I'm going to be arriving on a big day for hotels and restaurants across America. But there's something I've got to do first. Hello. Hi, Mum. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm just bringing you to wish you Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you so much, Gordon. And your flowers were lovely. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Well, I'm sorry I can't be with you. Thank you so much for calling us. It's really kind of you. Now, listen, have a great day. Love you lots. Love you. Bye. Bye now. Ah, great. Here we are. The Curtis House. Connecticut's oldest inn. Lovely. The Happy Mother's Day sign looks a bit crap, but I suppose it's the thought that counts. Look at this place. Built before 1736. Incredible. Hi there. Gordon, nice to see you. Well, welcome to the Curtis House. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. And what's your first name? Babe. I don't know you're a babe, but what's your name? Shirley. Shirley. Yeah. Nice to see you, my darling. So, it's Mother's Day. The restaurant's booked. Yes. Today's a big day, right? Yes. Is the hotel full? Not tonight. Oh. How many rooms are booked? Just one. Just one? Yeah. Just me? Yes. So I'm a little bit early. OK, usually check-in is 3 o'clock. Three. Oh. There's usually a $10 an hour fee. That's, what, four hours, so $40 already? Yes. So I could save a little bit of money by hanging out and actually going into the room? Yes. So I want to save myself 40 bucks. Yes. So if I just take a little nap... What is he doing? Mr. Ramsey. <laughs> That's really not appropriate. Mr. Ramsey, Gordon. This isn't very appropriate. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. But it doesn't make sense. You charge me ten dollars an hour. If I just hang out on the sofa, get a little blanket, I can save myself some money. You know, this rule actually went into effect about six months ago. This ten dollar an hour. Oh really? Thing. And is it making a big impact on the business? People don't like it. The bookings in the rooms have definitely gone downhill. I think they would be a lot busier if TJ didn't have these ridiculous rules. Um, is that right? My details in here? Credit card details? Yes, we take a credit card number to hold the room. No, I appreciate that, but why put it in the book? If that's the house policy, and if the customer insists, then we can't erase it once they check it. <laughs> I got the credit card details of everybody. I will have to call 911. I don't really have to call 911, do I? Babe, see, by the time you've called 911, okay, I've hacked into every credit card in this book and made myself a fortune. So whose policy is this? A bit weird. This is a house policy, um, wow. like TJ lights it. The owner? Yes. Would you not think there's a security oh, breach there? That's why her policy is no one to look in this book except the desk person. Wow. Okay. I can't believe you're going to be in room 16. Why? Because room 16 has a ghost in it. This woman told me who went to room 16. She said the ghost was pulling the blankets off her all night long. And you haven't been drinking sherry? No. Wow. Betty is a ghost at the Curtis house, and people do tell us that. She raises a little bit of havoc with them. She's definitely there. Room 16. The haunted room. My goodness me. <laughs> what is that on there? Is that a footprint? Come on, no way. So what's all that big scuff yes, mark on there? Yes, it looks like a footprint to me. And what's that in there? Dead bugs? Oh, dear. Oh, jeez, look at this one here. I give them a list huh? of the rooms that are coming in. They're supposed to thoroughly check the room. And what's... Do we, do, we, do we have electricity in the house? I couldn't believe what Gordon found in that room. And what is this? Oh. <laughs> Nobody just realized or care. How long have you been working here? Off and on since about 1965. How was it then? Busy all the time. Well, 48 years. That's incredible. So this place means a lot to you. Oh, yes. My second home. Are you connected to the family in any way? TJ's parents and my mother were cousins. So it must be sad for you to see it struggling. In yes, yeah. definitely. And why is it struggling? That's the way our two bosses get along. And was it different when TJ and Chris's parents were running it? Oh, yeah. Much more professional. So why do you stay? And why do you put up with this? I take pride in this place. I like this place. I can see that. I really do, but they don't understand that. The place is really worth it. 
I really think TJ and Chris are really hurting the business. Somebody needs to knock some sense into them. First impressions, um, dismal. All my credit card details downstairs in that book in such a vulnerable position. One of the busiest weekends ever for this hotel with Mother's Day. I'm the only one staying in the hotel. That's, that's not good. Dust everywhere and a windowsill full of bugs. I don't think I'm going to get possessed staying here. I think I'm going to get a disease. Right, go downstairs, have a look. Babe, let me out. Honestly, it must be the bloody ghost. Come on, Betty, let me out. I just want to get some lunch. I've just arrived at the Curtis house in Woodbury, Connecticut, and they've given me a room with a ghost and a door lock that doesn't work. At last. I'm the only guest in this hotel, despite the fact it's Mother's Day and the restaurant is fully booked. Hi. What a dreadful missed opportunity. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Curtis says I'm doing well. How about and you? This is. Hi, my name is TJ. TJ. Nice to meet you, sir. The owner. Yes. Nice sir. to see you. Nice to see you. This is my mother. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an absolute honor to meet you. Are you working today? I have worked every holiday and never got paid. That is ridiculous. You should be sat having lunch, enjoying this business. <laughs> um, should we go to the table? We shall. Time for me to see if the hotel's restaurant is as bad as the bedrooms. Right. My name's Karen. I'll be taking care of you. Are you connected to the family? Yes, I am on TJ and Uncle Chris's niece. OK, nice. And just in a nutshell, um, what's wrong with the place? Now there's no communication between my aunt and uncle. It's gotten a million times worse since my grandfather passed away. It shows, so, doesn't it? Yeah. I asked Bernard to come here because my family desperately needs his help. They've been struggling for way too long. They don't know what to do. We really need his help. This is the dinner menu. <laughs> wow. What would you say? Crab cakes? The crab cakes. Yeah, you, yes. Oh, no, don't look at me like that. That's slight <laughs> hesitation. They're, they're hit or miss. They're, they're hit or miss? Yeah. Uh, crab cakes, uh, crab what cakes? else? Um, I'll take some calamari. Okay. Um, do you know what? Let's have a little taste of the burger. How do you like it cooked? Medium rare, please. Medium rare. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Mike. All right. Listen, this is Ramsey. Crab cakes, calamari with gorgonzola when he wants the burger, medium rare. I am very proud of my food. Whenever I eat other places, I think we're better than 90% of them. Do we have calamari on the line or no? The crab cakes. Lovely. Um, let's do this together. Do you mind? Please? Come on, you're supposed to be my, my wingman. <laughs> I, I had to swallow it. It was not enjoyable. Hit or miss? For me, that's a miss. Yeah, it's not. Holy shit. These I warned you about. You did warn me about. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. How was lunch, my darling? It wasn't very good. It, everything feels institutional. Right. You know, like we just got out of the hospital and it's the best food we could get. I'm sorry. It's not a nice surprise for Mother's Day, is it? No, it's not. Yeah. Calamari and then I'll have the, bur the burger. A cocktail sauce, pork and lemon. Monkey dish for the marinara. <laughs> the fried calamari. Can you hear any crispiness? That's limper than my granddad's dick. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That's disgusting. It's awful, it's awful. I'll bypass. All set? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, what would you like? The calamari was mostly greasy. You know I have to bring this food out. You know he's going to critique it. And you know I'm going to come right back with it in one second because you don't care. You're just setting me like shit on a plate, basically. I need some mushrooms, Mike. My burger. Your burger. With the Thank you very much. Fries. Jesus. Where's my burger? What a mess. Did you tell them it was medium rare? Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus. It's raw. That is not medium rare. What a shame. That is dreadful. My uncle can't cook a burger medium rare. Are you freaking kidding me? Can you take me through and introduce me to the chef? Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, your uncle? Yep. Uncle, uncle Chris. Chris. I can't believe how bad my food was. I've got to see the kitchen in action for myself. Right back here is my Hi. cousin Mike. Hi, Chef. And uh, Chef Ramsey. This, this and is Uncle Chris. OK, so TJ's little brother. Yes, baby right. brother. Mike Trudeau. Mike Trudeau, good Very to see you, nice Likewise, nice. and this is Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Fire, you have a mushroom wrap, one all day, and a primavera. Plan A. Okay. 
am I OK? Yeah, I've been here 10 minutes. I'm amazed none of you even asked me how my lunch was. What's most shocking isn't the food, or that they have zero interest in my experience as a diner. It's the fact that Chris and his sister don't exchange a single word. They won't even look at each other. You could cut the atmosphere in here with a knife. Wow. This guy must really hate mothers, the way he's treating these dishes. You put food on a plate like you're slopping it. Can I borrow that cloth a minute? You're wiping plates with this. You don't care. I don't know about that. To say that and not know me at all is, doesn't have any foundation. Jesus Christ. Is anything cooked to order here? French fries, salads. French fries, salads. Yeah. Shit. 20 fucking dollars a head for that. Chris doesn't seem like an owner or a chef. He isn't even cooking. He's just heating things up. Chris, you got two seconds, please? Here's where I'm getting frustrated. You own the place. You cook like you hate the place. Come on, Chris, talk to me, please. If you're not going to talk to me, then I'm wasting my time here. What's the point? The Curtis house in Woodbury, Connecticut, is falling apart because owners Chris and TJ won't talk to each other, and it's affecting the inn's guests as well as the food. That is dreadful. I don't know if there are ghosts upstairs, but there's definitely a dead man walking in the kitchen. You own the place. You cook like you hate the place. This place is a mess. It's like nobody cares here. One thing's for sure. It is not happy fucking families, let me tell you. All right, ghost stories and legends of southwestern Connecticut. Wow. Room 16 is host to a doting female paying special attention to male guests staying in the room. She tucks them into the bed and may even crawl next to them. What? At least they've got one regular guest. Betty, it's you. OK. Find out. Good night, Betty. I didn't get a visit from Betty the ghost, but I still had a rough night's sleep. Wow, I feel so dusty after last night. I hope Betty's not watching from there. Shit, that's cold. Oh, man. This inn has been in the Hardesty family for four generations, and I can't understand why TJ and Chris have no appreciation for what has been given to them. I've called a staff meeting, and I'm hoping this will get them talking before they lose their family heirloom. I just want to have a quick chat with you all. My first impressions have not been good, but I struggle to believe that you two are brother and sister. It is shocking. No communication, not even looking at each other. Why can't you two at least talk to each other? Get frustrated with some things, and all the time we talk and talk about doing shit, and we never get anything done. And do you think this is what your father wanted? No, absolutely not. What's wrong with this place? I feel a lot of management. You know, a thank you would be nice every once in a while. You know, that's all I ask for. I'm more hurt than angry because I care so much about them. You sound like you've been pushed to breaking point. Yeah. I felt like TJ and Christopher don't give a shit. I don't know how much more I can take. Cheyenne, when did the drive go out of the kitchen? When did the essence, when did the word passion disappear? I've never seen all three in that kitchen. Ever? Ever. I feel like I am the voice of truth. Everybody else, either one, doesn't care, or two, they just don't see it. I've been saying since day one that this kitchen is a joke. There are no standards in the kitchen, chef. It's depressing. Fuck Cheyenne. His opinion doesn't really matter to me. Never has, never will. I watched you in the kitchen. It was like you were just hired as an extra. And TJ, your feud with your brother is clearly getting in the way of running your business. The staff are desperate. And you know what hurts? It's a blessing that you've got this place. The potential is huge, yet you walk around and treat it like it's a curse. I came to your inn as a guest, and I am not fucking happy. Both of you are sleepwalking to disaster. Go to your office and at least try to talk. If you can't talk, you might as well close the doors right now. You know, in the 30 years I've been here, I never had anybody ever complain like that. And it makes it tough, and then 
throw it in my face even harder, you know? Hi. You okay? No. What's wrong? You really gave me a wake-up call because this place is toxic. TJ has issues. I think she's a control freak. And you talking to them, they're standing there. As far as I'm concerned, they made asses out of themselves. I'm done here. I cannot work here no more. This is your life. This is your... Yeah, and it's destroying... I can see that. They don't care about us. They need to hear it from you. OK. I can't believe it's come to this. As far as I'm concerned, TJ and Christopher, they're not going to change. It's a total shame. Hey. hey. How are you? Not good. I, I, I can't, I can't work here anymore. I'm sorry. It's destroying me. I don't like it. You know, I care about every one of my staff no, here. you don't. You make people feel uncomfortable. And I'm telling you, I don't know whether anybody else is going to speak up. I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any means at all either. But, you know, I don't think that there should be personal attacks. This is the way I feel, whether you guys like it or not, because it's just killing me. I feel as though there's no future. I'm done. You're giving me a look like every single bit of that is justified. A lot of the shit she says is true, TJ. Nobody wants to fucking talk to you. I am not gonna have her tell me that I'm this mean, horrible monster that doesn't give a shit Everybody about people. Everybody thinks you're a mean, horrible bitch. Everybody. I really think you need to fucking talk to somebody or do something before you're in a padded fucking room. I disagree. The proof is in the pudding. You're strung out, you're fucking tweaked right to the fucking end every day because you don't have any help, and then you turn into a miserable fucking psycho bitch. Shut the fuck up. She didn't know what she was fucking talking about, and she could drag her fucking ass. Did I ever say anything to you? The broken relationship between the owners of Connecticut's Curtis House Inn has gotten to an all-time low. Everybody thinks you're a mean, horrible bitch. I asked them to talk for the first time in months, but all they did was yell at each other. Shut the fuck up. I'll keep this brief. I've got to get them to see if they don't communicate, this in will shut its doors. I don't know what it's going to take to wake you up. You've already lost one of your employees because you can't get it together. You're starting to resent each other and the work you're doing. Oh, I, I agree. But I think it's hard to come to work knowing the minute you walk in the door till you walk out the back door, there's a disagreement in every room you're in. It used to be that we talked things through. We just stopped doing it. Just been frustrated. Frustrated every fucking day. For three years? Yeah. You know, if you got so frustrated with me three years ago that you just stopped talking, it's horrible. Oh. Every fucking time we talk, it would turn into an argument, and I was just avoiding the arguments. You know, just got fucking fed up. We're not talking three months. Three years. When was the last time either of you stayed here and see how the guests experienced it through their eyes? You've I've never, never done it. It shows. Can both of you come with me, please? There's something in my room I'd like to show you. If Chris and TJ won't listen to each other, maybe they'll listen to the people who could keep their business alive. Please, both of you take a stand over there. Here we have some guests, and I think you're going to find that their feedback invaluable. Anna, let's start off with you first. Just pulling back the comforter. Honestly, it looked like the sheets hadn't been changed. And the chair kind of picked up the cushion, and there was, for lack of a better word, a skid mark on the bottom of the cushion. It was disgusting. Uh, the pillows had some stains on them. Insects on the windowsills. It looks like the windows haven't been washed in a while. We had uh, flowers, like, in here. They had, like, an inch of dust on them. We did not have a bathroom door. We had a wicker, like, divider. And when you try to pull it, it just kind of falls over. Wow. Jump in, guys. I mean, I, you I'm know, these are customers that are paying money. It's very disheartening. I, I've never got responses like this before, and I, I wish I had. Can I talk to you about the arrival? When you arrive, you hand over your personal credit card details, addresses, your cell numbers. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens to your details after you've left? Because in this book is all of your credit card details. Oh, here we go. This is it. This is the hammer. 
it is vital information of your credit card details, your addresses, your cell numbers, in black and white. This is a ticking time bomb. How's that make you feel? With everything that's going on nowadays with the identity theft and everything like that, I'm not pleased at all about that. Would you be so kind just to leave me here with the owners for two minutes, please? I appreciate your feedback. Thank, Thank you, guys. Sorry. Thank you. No, no. Thank Still you. in my fucking life. You asked me here to come and help you, but you both need to change your ways. You won't open up to me, and you won't open up to each other. Your business is literally dying because you won't communicate. But it's like you don't care. I can't even start to move forward because I'm not feeling the fucking the hunger that both of you want this place to work. So I'm just saying, fuck it, sell it. I'm going downstairs. Not again. Fuck. Oh my gosh, Gordon can't even find the solution. Takes two, takes two hands to get out. I love this place. I love this place with all my heart. But the way things are going, the revelation is it's just not worth it. I'm really struggling to get through to Chris and TJ. The person who knows them better than anyone is their mother, Trudy. And I'm hoping she may help me to unlock that divide between them and hopefully get these two back on track. <laughs> Darling, I came to see you this morning because I need your help. I'm struggling to get through to TJ and I'm struggling to get through to Chris. They don't communicate, they don't drive the business forward. They just bicker and butt heads. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know why. How much does that in mean to you? I mean, what, what does it stand for in your family? It stands for a lot of homework, if nothing else. Yeah. We all had to work in there. You should be reaping the rewards of the family success in nearly six decades. But how would it make you feel if this business was sold to a different family now? I mean. All that work of you and your husband's commitment. I don't want another bitter change. Yeah. I really don't want to see it go down the street tomorrow. I want to see if those two can't come back together and get it back on their feet. Yeah. I really want to help your family, and I really want to keep this business alive for another 60 years. So we're going to have to get them to talk to each other. Otherwise, the business is doomed. Well, you're right. And I need your help. Please. You got it. Thank you. I'll see you back at the inn. OK. OK. Thank you, my love. Coming up. For the two of you to be able to communicate as brother and sister is more important than even the sin. Has change come too late for the Curtis house? The Curtis House in Woodbury, Connecticut, is sinking because the two owners won't speak to each other. And despite the hotel's dire situation, I've been unable to get through to Chris and TJ. Come on, Chris, you don't care. So, I went to see their mum, and I need your help. You got it. Now, Trudy has organized a family intervention to let TJ and Chris know how much they're fighting is hurting the inn and everyone around them. Hi, guys. Oh, boy. First of all, uh, to you guys, I appreciate you being here. Your mum has brought everyone together just to talk to you from the bottom of their hearts. I hope this is going to open your eyes, because right now, I don't know what will. Who would like to go first? Tess, what have you got to say, my darling? Mum, I think that you're spread way too thin. We think that the mounting work is getting to be too much. You're getting frustrated, and eventually it's bound to spill over. But I think that for the two of you to still be able to talk and communicate as brother and sister is more important than even the sin. Karen, darling. I've sat with both of you many times, talked about all the problems. You guys just go back and forth. There's no resolve, nothing. You have to get on the same page about it. It's way too much for everyone in this place. It's awful. 
something has to change. Thank you, darling. Babe, darling. Okay, TJ and Chris, I really hope we can all get through this. This is so important. You've been here for 48 years. You know this place better than anybody. The two of you were so close for so many years, I know, because I was there and I've seen it. We used to come to work and do our job and really enjoy working with each other. And with both your stubbornness, you took that all away. Since you two stopped speaking, everything is going downhill. I want to help you two get back together like it used to be. And I know the Curtis House can be that way again, and only you two can make that happen. We all want to be there for you and help you. And with a lot of hope and help from Gordon's expertise, we can get Connecticut's oldest in the Curtis House, back to where it should be. And you two then can be very, very proud of what you accomplished. Trudy, my darling, can these two make it work? They sure can. They sure can, they have. And we're behind them, 100%. They are desperate, beyond belief, to help you make this place work. You both have to step up. When he walks through the door, I have to be the person that's there for him. That's it. But I want him, I want him to be my guy here, and I want to be the person he goes to. Chris. Do you want to make this work? Chris and TJ's family have come together for a last ditch attempt to save the Curtis House Inn by getting them to talk to each other again. Now Chris has to decide if he'll commit to the inn or walk away. Chris, do you want to make this work? Absolutely. It just sucks that we've gone this far. Yeah, I'd stop being a jerk, especially to my sister. Well, right now, I really just want to make my mother proud and my family proud. It's been a family establishment all these years, and I have to make them proud again. <laughs> Christopher and I let everything else get in the middle of our relationship. We have to be each other's number one. You know, family first. We can do it. <laughs> family united makes a stronger front. You ready? Yes, absolutely. That was the first time we've seen that in three years. It was like, we did it. Three, you guys are yeah. yes. yes. With Chris and TJ ready for change, my design team has worked all night to transform the inn. And now, it's time to reveal the new look to the team. Welcome to the new Curtis House, Connecticut's oldest inn, run by an extraordinary family, providing a warm and welcoming experience for other families. Excited? I can't wait. You're going to love it. Are you ready to go inside? Yes, we are. Let's go. Follow me, please. Please come in. Oh, my God. Look at this. That is awesome. Welcome to your amazing new lobby. Come through, ladies. Oh. A decluttered, very welcoming, warm space. Over here we have this stunning silhouette. They are historical portraits of all your family. Oh. <laughs> TJ, come here. Come over here. You OK? <laughs> Come here. The silhouettes of the family and the staff, it put me over the edge because this business was built on that. You need to celebrate your family history, not be trapped by it. Now, one thing that concerned me on my first arrival was the check-in and that reservation book that was gathering all that sensitive personal data. Come over, please. Oh, my God, what is that? Oh, my God, a computer! <laughs> Now, we know they didn't have these in 1754, but you can, OK? <laughs> the credit cards and all the personal details will be safe. We've had that red book for years. I'm so happy it's gone. 
If Aunt TJ brings the red book back out, I will burn it. I'll do anything to make sure we never see that thing again. I'd like to take you upstairs now uh, to my room. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. You'll be pleased to know we've repaired the door handle so it actually works. Welcome. Oh, oh my God. Ready now? Wow. Come on. Have a look. Wow. wow. Again, steeped in history, mm -hmm. but encapsulating that modern elegance. The panels on the wall will elevate the scope, the depth of the room. TJ, Betty, the ghost, has her own cushion. <laughs> <laughs> I think Betty's going to be very happy with what Gordon did. I think she's going to love the fact that she's become an elegant feature. So, babe, I want you to come here, please. <laughs> and stand there. Now, relax, turn around. And we look at the eyes of that picture. And move, and, move, and, move, and move your head from left to right. Uh, and the eyes move. The eyes follow you around the room. <laughs> oh, my God. The eye portrait, it was really creepy, but I would try to stay in there. I might have another room on backup just in case I couldn't make it through the night, but I would definitely give it a try. Ready to see another one? This one you're going to love. It's my favorite one. Let's go. There we go. Oh, my God. How beautiful wow. is that? Oh my God. It's gorgeous. Uh, I really feel the changes are gonna help TJ and I get some things back into focus. My father would definitely like a lot of the, the changes. I wish he was here to see it. Now, you won't believe what I have downstairs for you. Let's go. Coming up, I give Babe a surprise she'll never forget. Go ahead, a French kiss. Mm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I've just shown the family their new oh, lobby. Oh, my God. And the new bedrooms. Oh, my God. Now, it's time to show them the new improvements to the hotel restaurant. The inn has been in the Hardesty family for four generations. Oh, wow. Wow. So, I've come up with a new menu that reflects the family's history. The Curtis House family favourites. Oh, my God. Let's start off with Grandma Trudy's crab cake. <laughs> they hit every single time. TJ's grilled salmon and corn Johnny cakes. Chris's country fried pork chop dipped in buttermilk. So with mac and cheese, gravy and green beans. You're only allowed it once a week, right? <laughs> <laughs> and when you're cooking your family's food, it's going to be so much more love, so much more care to what you're serving. Now, tuck in and enjoy. Oh, that sauce is unbelievable. I'm really excited to show off the new menu. This is a good one. <laughs> Finally, now this is something I can tell people it's really, really good. Everything here is delicious. Very, very, very good. It's like a new ball game. Right. A whole new mm. ball game. Just like us. Mm. Tonight is the relaunch of the new improved Curtis House. As the guests arrive, there's a new sense of warmth and welcome from TJ and the staff. Welcome to the Curtis House. How are you? I love the new work, and I can't wait for our customers to come in because I want to see their reaction. Wow. We've got our own little fireplace. I love how it has that nice, cozy cottage feel, but yet in modern. This is definitely going to get people in the rooms, and we're proud to send them up there. Welcome to the Curtis House. Thank you. Let me take you upstairs to your room. This is delicious. Down in the restaurant, Chris is taking charge and putting in the care he needs to make his diners happy. Crab cakes need to go in the oven, please. It feels very good to have the hardest your name on the menu. You know, it's where it should be. Definitely giving me a little more focus, a little more direction, and a little more immediate pride. Yeah, I'll use a spoon for that one, please. Thank you. Come on, Chris, we good? We good? <laughs> more importantly, TJ and Chris are working together and communicating. Is that going? Yes. And then we got a clam and a slider coming. Yes. I think my brother's and my attitude has changed dramatically. Plating my clams right now. Plating now, thank you. My brother and I are backs working very well together. How are we doing, Jordy? We're doing fine. I'm getting all kinds of compliments again. Oh, baby, you're all right, Ma. You're all right. It's definitely one of the most important things to me is seeing my mother and my sister and my family happy. TJ and Chris are finally working together. But I have one last thing I need to do to help turn this business around. You must be Donna. Good to see Sorry. you. Thank you. I've asked a paranormal expert to investigate the spirits haunting the inn. Somebody here? Camera's acting really funky. Boo. <laughs> you are officially 
a member of the Haunted Connecticut Tours. <laughs> and you are now officially haunted. Congratulations, my darling. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hang that up with pride. Now that the Curtis House is certified as haunted and on the ghost tour, it will attract even more business and help this family get out of debt. Uh, ladies, I'm going to say goodbye. But I'm ready for you to leave. No, TJ. you just can't leave. I know, my job is done. You two have been amazing. If they stop talking to each other, call me, please. I'm going to miss you. Oh, no, come on, babe. I'm going to miss you, too. Little kiss. And two. Do you know they give you four in Paris? Yes. Have you had a French kiss? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Gordon did give me two kisses on my cheek. <laughs> yes, I haven't washed it yet. <laughs> okay, my time is done. I'm going to leave you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Don't let 60 years of hard work disappear. Absolutely not. Promise me you're going to continue talking to Absolutely. your sister. The minute you don't, the place is doomed. And you have a beautiful, beautiful in here. Thank you very much. I can't wait to come back. Go ahead, Take care of you, come. Yeah. Look after each other, please. Thank you. Gordon Ramsay put some life back into us. Good night, Betty. Well, wow. Gordon showed us where our relationship should be and will be from this point on. I'm forever grateful to Gordon Ramsay for coming in here and straightening us out. I ain't afraid of no ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Since my visit, TJ and Chris have learned how important it is to work together. Hot roasted chicken mashed only, turkey as it comes. Gordon pulled off something that I wasn't sure was going to be able to be mended. I think I got my best friend back, and he's not going anywhere this time. There you go. It's definitely an eye-opening experience. It's not a daily grind now. Bookings for the hotel are up. If there's any spirits present in this room... And it's bringing in tourists who want to get a glimpse of Betty the Ghost. Good evening. Welcome to the Curtis House. If Gordon didn't come, I think we were pretty much done. You saved my family, and this feels like you gave us our life back.